Welcome to the Stone Roadie Show. That was a little bit of uh, Tuesday's Gone, a tribute band, and uh, Craig posted that earlier today, and I got a real good kick out of that. That was that was a fantastic uh, working for MCA riff by uh, Ed King there. I even talked to Jim King, his brother, earlier today, and he said, yeah, that was spot on. And so uh, we here at the uh, road at the roadie show, we support all the tribute bands. We uh, we appreciate the legacy of uh, Leonard Skinner living on. Same same way with the uh, current Leonard Skinner. We love those guys, and we want to see those guys su successful in any way. And uh, speaking of that, we uh, we've got had a little excitement today over at Craig's house, and as you can see. Craig has got uh, his uh, Gary Rossington hat on again, and he's got another shirt on. He looks just like Gary Rossington. So we're going we're gonna to continue the uh, Gary Rossington tribute today because uh, we had a little bit of excitement. What happened, what happened today, Craig? Oh, that's funny. I think I look like Gary Rossington. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, I like I could look as cool as Gary Rossington. Just because I got a Gary Rossington hat on, don't make me anywhere near as cool as Gary. You know, but you know, you know, I wear a Gary Rossington hat, and most of you all wear a Ronnie hat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you, some of you look sillier than that Ronnie hat than I look in a Gary hat. So put that in my pipe, and we'll smoke it. <laughs> oh man, today's been fun. You know what? Uh, I know what you know. You know Gary. Gary said he he talked to him today, man. He called me. He said, "Man, <laughs> me and Dale laugh, you know." And, and let me see. Let me see if I can see. Oh, your romper room mirror. There, there he is. Hey, Gary. Hey, hey, man. Cool. You're you're really there. Oh man, hey Dale, hey hey Annie, Mary, and the dog. I don't know your dog's name anymore, but wow, man, hey, man, I'm so I'm so glad you guys are enjoying this. It cracks me up. Me and Gary just had a hoot not talking about. He called me, you know. Well, actually, Steve Steve Adoris, you know, called his uh, uh, tour manager, tour uh, production manager. You know, I was I was there at the end. I was uh, Steve Adoris's assist and he put up with me we, we we should get him on the show you know i tell him how how uh, uh unresponsible i was that i party he he could t testify on that one boy you know i told gary i said you know have you heard that you're so famous you made me the world's most famous roadie you know and i said i said it's hilarious you know but you know i was on facebook and everybody says you know, um, uh, <clears throat> that, uh, you know, I was, uh, that they, they kind of got mad, uh, because, uh, no, well, not mad, but they knew they, 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 they from the movies and stuff, there's a Craig Reed, he seems to know something, maybe we can drag it out of him, and, you know, I wasn't talking, you know, and, and they was like, man, you're, you're an ass, you know, we, you know something, you know, so I said, so then, you know, they said, write a book. I said, I'm too stupid to write a book. I'd have to read a book before I could write a book. <laughs> but dang, if I ain't being, feel like I'm writing a book now, holy moly. It's all I do is write notes about, I don't want to go, but where was I going with that other story? I don't want to break off like I always yeah, you, you was talking about Gary and, and how, I guess, the podcast came about and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, yeah, thanks. Because I don't want to get lost like I always do. I was doing that to Gary. That's so where we go. But, you know, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I says, you know, I says, uh, um, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I says, uh, let's be... That guy, guy from Sense Magazine said he wanted to do a podcast, and he said it would be thirty or minutes. He would do something, and then he'd edit it and do I, I it down to ten minutes. And I said, God, if you do it like that, I think I could put something together. I think I could do that. And then, and then I fall through, and I, I did this mic. You know, I tell Gary, I, I says, man, I got the best mic you can get. I got this Shure Seven Seven B studio mic, and and I got the best camera web webcam you can buy not regular cam but this one zooms and everything 
That's pro- oh, uh, speaking of Zoom, I should I should probably I just looked over there. I need to zoom in. Where's my Where's our my, my Zoomer? And, and Craig's got the oh, green. Oh, oh like I, like my my grand my like my grandpa had my grandma. She had a cat named Tiz. You know, and she'd walk around going, "Here, Tiz! Here, Tiz!" Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's where my remote is. I didn't find. It. I said, "Oh." Here it is. <laughs> here it is. Get it? Here it is. Grandma going up. Here it is. Here it is. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Here it is. Here it is. Here, here it is. Oh, well, whatever. We we don't edit, so, you know, just got to live with it. You know, like Johnny Carson. You know, yeah. Where's the gong? Where's the gong? Here. Uh, oh. All right. Long sound. Oh, well, I got the tambourine. I don't work like the gong. I don't know. The Doug Gray tambourine. Okay, enough, enough jibber jabber and messing around. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just, I, you know, I'm just having fun with this. You know, that's, that's, you know, whatever, you know. But Craig, you know, Craig, uh, you it, know what it is. I know y'all want to hear what me and Gary talked about, but I'm going I'm to torture you. Hey, so, hey, yeah. Craig, let me ask you something. Didn't Gary, he let your, uh, your nickname out, Jukin Judson Reed. Well, yeah, when he answered the phone. Well, I got to get back to Steve DeLore, divorce, de, 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 divorce, you know, de, Steve DeLore. The word, uh, whatever, and the Vadoras, Vadoras, Steve Vadoras. <laughs> yeah, he called me and he said, Yeah, Gary called your cell phone and it said, I don't answer this phone, call my home phone because that's exactly what it says. <laughs> but Gary didn't know my home phone, so Steve found it somewhere and wanted to make sure it was there. And, and said so Gary wanted to call. Like, oh man, call me because it was funny. I tried to call find Gary's number the other day. You know, I thought that I had it in the phone, but that's just this is amazing. I was gonna call him, and then he called me, and he says, "Oh my God, we heard we heard you were doing a podcast, man, and me and Dale were watching it. We were laughing, you know, and it was so funny, man. You know, he says." I said, did you hear me sing? He goes, yeah, man, I didn't know you could sing. We could have had you sing with us. <laughs> he didn't really say that. I just made that up because <laughs> I know I can't <laughs> sing. And he said, he goes, oh, I, yeah, I remember you. I remember what you say. Thinking, I, hey, strangers in the night. How's that, Gary? <laughs> you remember that one? <laughs> and... And exchanging glances, <laughs> but he we were laughed, and I says, and he said, "Oh God, that thing you were telling about the, the when we were we were, we were traveling in the ten passenger Econoline van." He go, "Oh man, those are some of my best memories too, man. That was so cool." He said, "He said, he said, he said, man." I don't know what's going on with you. I you know there's something going on about you or upset of or something he goes he goes man he says about somebody somebody was trying to say you were going to say something he goes man craig you know i i ain't got nothing to hide you know i I said well what about this thing uh blood oath thing i said i don't i i don't know (laughs) we were laughing i said hi gary I know. I said I know. There's no such a thing. I don't think you know because I think you, you never mentioned anything. You know, not that I ever asked, but I never knew anything that was. One thing I ever knew about this band it was, is you know, it was really great, man. You guys are the, you know, the the best band that ever there ever was, and you know and i appreciate so much you making me famous too you know and uh, and we talked about you know how be you know being the most famous roadie in the whole world you know and i told gary i said you know i said th- I, you know people said that you know y- you know y- y- you belong in the rock and roll hall of fame and i said i'm a roadie and they go well you you knew you knew gary you knew alan you knew ronnie and you partied with them and fished with them and you were part of the band we've heard about you you're a part of the band you were considered a part of the band you and gene odom and and dean kilpatrick and 
uh, and Kevin, you know, you all were a part of the band, you know, and, and, um, and, uh, unfortunately, you know, most of you are gone and Kevin, he doesn't care to talk about anything. He's got, he's got, does, he still does his own thing. He doesn't have to hang on the coattails of the band to be famous like I do, you know, <laughs> You know, but I enjoy every minute of it. Like I told Gary, I said, "Oh God, thank you so much." You know, I said, "You know, I am." But you know, both of us. Hey, he's he's been. I've been everywhere, and I've he's been everywhere, and I've been everywhere he's been. So <laughs> you know, that's kind of where that goes. You know, you guys and, haven't uh, talked in about what four years or so, maybe. It's it's been yeah it's been a while it's it's been since you know I left the band you know it's been a while you know I just I just lost his number and he kind of lost my number and I you know I guess somebody gave me my cell number you know but you do that you know and I just you know uh, we no 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 we talked we talked up there matter of fact thank you we talked about when last time we saw each other and. Gary came up and hugged me and said, I love you, man. Love you, mean it. You know, that's what I said to Gary when we hung up with tonight, today. I said, hey, Gary, love you, mean it. And he laughed. <laughs> you know, but, uh, yeah, we talked about Gary last week, and I. it was funny. I was in the, in the hot tub, you know, do it before I was doing this. I was getting in there because... It confuses me because I think of too many things. I think I know I'm going to say when we do this. But, but anyways, where was I going? Oh, yeah, yeah. Last week we talked to, we were talking about things that made Gary so cool. And, and he did things differently, you know, even the way he smoked a cigarette. He smoked it in between these fingers here instead of like normal people do. And, you know, I always try to emulate Gary, you know, like I'm doing now because he's so cool, you know. And, and one time we were, when I smoked, because I didn't smoke very often, but I did when I was high. And sometimes I was high when I was around Gary. <laughs> <You know? laughs> no, not really. But anyways, <laughs> but anyways so, so yeah, my microphone's falling. When it's falling, when it's falling uh, hold on a minute. Anyways, there were a long time ago, oh, I was around Gary, yeah. And one time in particular, oh, and this is what I wanted to ask Gary and see how, if, if, if it meant anything to him or, because I remember this and I just remember if he ever knew, because I never let on that I kind of saw his his face or his expression when I was doing something. You know how people are, you just kind of blow it off. But he noticed that I was holding my cigarette like he does, you know, in between these fingers. And he noticed it and he looked at me kind of funny, you know, and I just thought like, just blew it off like, yeah, I do that all the time or whatever. And he was got to wonder like, that's how I do it. Nobody does it like <laughs> me, you know. And I, 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 always, I always wondered what, uh, hey, Gary, did you remember that? <laughs> when I, you looked down and I was holding my cigarette like you do, and you looked at me awful funny. And I just, you know, <laughs> I always remember, I always wondered if you, that what the hell is he doing copying me? But that's the, that's the best compliment you can give. I, man, I was giving you a compliment. God dang, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, that's now. Now you now everybody will start that smokes those stinking things. We'll we'll smoke do it there. But you know what I heard? I actually heard that tobacco um, fights that um, thing that's going around. That oh yeah, that um, yeah that the tobacco actually counts that germs. That. Yeah, and it, they they found it weird that people who uh, smoked weren't hospitalized as much as people that were yeah so then that, that's that's why they when they started announcing that cigarette smoking was bad when they found out that, that he kept them from getting that other thing i don't know if anybody else noticed that but 
you know, oh, well, no, I was crazy well, people do things like that. <laughs> there's always something good about something that seems bad, I guess. Yeah. Hey, what else we got? Hey, hey Gary, you, you know, uh, uh, wait, uh, Craig, uh, when you what, were talking. I, no, wait, no, 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 no. I got some notes here. I got oh, okay. some notes here. Uh, my, my buddy here that helped. Me. Oh, by the way, this green thing back here. Yeah. yeah we're, this is our 11th podcast. And. And I'm trying to do a green screen thing, you know, and, 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 and I, and I decided that I would put panels in my windows. So it actually looked like I could put anything else I wanted out there. And I want to, and I want to thank military spec down on triplet Boulevard in Akron. It's 30, 34, 95 triplet Boulevard. And I called down there and, and I told them, I'm going to get involved with this story and then I'm holding this so I know where I'm at next time I come back. But I'm going to do a commercial. This is our first commercial for Military Spec 3495 Triplet Boulevard, Akron, Ohio. And it's across from that haunted house place down there. You all know where that's at. Down there by where they, they have the blimp down there at the at the oh, where they I've been the to that soap, hangar over the there. Yeah, box derby. Yeah, the soapbox derby down there, and then they have the big, the big blimp hangar, and then yep. they got the big haunted house where they. Well, this, this is this is a military spec. They do packaging, all kind of cardboard. When back when I used to build guitars, they used to uh, build my boxes to ship them out, and you know, and and uh, so, but it was taken over by, but by. by uh, some new owners and I called them up today and I said I used to do business with them but it's been a while and they said yeah that they just bought their place and then I asked them if they had any cardboard that size there it's 21 by oh what is that 29 uh, 21 by 29 yeah and they said yeah but their their, their, their machines broke and they couldn't t sell me nothing because their machines broke I said I'll pay you cash you know, I don't need a receipt. I'll pay you cash. Well, we, uh, 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 you know, and, and, well, they didn't him haul around. They just, you know, said, you know, and I said, I'll pay you double, you know, and then, and then they said, well, we can't, we can't take cash. Well, hey, Craig, be Craig, be careful because people will think we're making a lot of money off this podcast. And you're oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I'm yeah. going to get to something cool. I'm telling a story here. So then I said, no, we don't take cash and people don't take cash anymore. And I went, okay. So then I called them. They said, you'll have to wait till tomorrow. So I said, okay, well, cool. So then I called them back. I goes, how about making those panels for me and taking my credit card information and running my credit card tomorrow? And they said, yeah, we could do that. So then, um, I went down there and, uh, and, and and the lady, really nice lady, a young lady, attractive lady, and and her husband. I didn't, didn't see him, but but uh, she said, I said, oh, how much how much did I owe you? Because I was looking for my credit card, and I thought, oh God, I give up my credit card. What did I do with it? So she said, no charge. I says, what do you mean no charge? She goes, it's cardboard, you know, and you know, and we like you, so here, just take take yeah. it. And, 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 and you know what was cool? I thought that she, I thought I'd said something that, that I, I had kind of told her I was famous and do it for me or whatever. <laughs> maybe I did. I thought maybe she saw our podcast and, said, and we got back there. I thought she thought I was famous and she, and, and that's why she did it. And I said, and I got there and I got, oh God, it's, a, it's amazing when people do things new for you because you're famous. She goes, Who's famous? You? <laughs> we just did it because we like you. You he know? didn't recognize you, huh? You know, we liked your attitude, and you know, it's just cardboard. So here, take it. You know, so, so <laughs> I got home and and it, it's fit per it fits perfect. No, I had to get the the green paint and paint it. You know, but it fits per perfect in there. So I called her and told asked her if I could mention the. Uh, Military supplies down on uh, 3495 Triplet Boulevard. Yeah, if you if you have anything you want to ship out or any kind of boxes or any kind of 
that kind of stuff. Yeah, go down there. There, there you get the best deal in the world down there. And it's a, and it's an American company. You know, you made in the USA. Go, go, go. You know. <laughs> yeah, go USA. But you know, I don't know her name, but just. When you call up, just say, hey, the stone roadie sent me, and she'll know who you are. <laughs> That'd be cool. But I'm going to do some, heavy, I, won't, I won't make it lengthy like this one, but we'll be, I'll be advertised. When I get, when I get the, when I get the, uh, when I get Mars, when you're sitting here and you think I'm on the planet Jupiter and there's, but at Mars, and you'll think, that guy's out in, from outer space and he's from Mars and you can look out my window and you'll see it. That'll be pretty cool. But, you know, we're trying to keep up with the times here, you know, but all right then. Now, that's my commercial for the for the Stone Roadie show. And the first question from myself is one I wrote that <laughs> when great, when, what does it say? read uh he wrote i can't read his right now i was in the tub yelling hey write this down <laughs> no i did the cigarette one uh, what is it when gary saw your okay uh, uh, gary heard you sing on the podcast yeah i said that girl said you had a what's that Oh, ha, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I talked to Dale, too. Uh, hi, Dale. Hey, I love you. I told her that about a million times. She knows that I love Dale. She's the best. She's so cool, man. She's the best honk at ever. She's so cool. Me and Dale, me and Dale were friends, man. I think, God, I might, I, I think me and Dale were friends before. Yeah, we were. We were friends before she got with Skinner, man, you know? And God Almighty knows, yeah, we had good me. We got old memories go way back. But anyways, um, yeah, Dale said, um, oh yeah, I told her. I said, I, I, she said something, and I quoted the jerk, the movie, the jerk again. You know, because I said that that I was somebody. Oh yeah, read my shirt here. Uh -huh. I'm somebody. That's why I wore that shirt because. When Gary Rossington called me today, I goes, oh, my God, I'm somebody. <laughs> That's how I wore the shirt, you know, I'm somebody. <laughs> but, yeah, Dale, I said, I said, yeah, Dale, I'm somebody, you know, because because you guys made me famous, you know. <laughs> I don't thank you guys for making me famous. Now I'm somebody. But then she said, I said, I quote that from the jerk. And she said, yeah, now you have a special purpose. <laughs> of course, you guys that never saw the jerk won't get it. But, <laughs> oh, well. Go watch it. Yeah, go watch yeah. it. Yeah. You're out of luck now. You don't get that one. You know, well, where's some other notes? Is that all you wrote down? Hey, Craig, oh, did, did Craig, did Gary? You know what I said? You were worth, weren't worthless before. I take that back. Hey, Craig. Steve, Steve calling you first. What's that mean? Steve calling you first. What did I mean by that? Hey, Craig, you hear me? What? Did, uh, did you and, uh, Gary, talk about anything? Jog any stories out of out of Gary's head about anything? That's what I was trying to get him to. I one I remember the, the things. Me and Gary and Dale were together when John Lennon. We got the the word the word about John Lennon had been killed. Me and him, Gary and Dale were together. Oh, okay. In the car or whatever. <clears throat> Um, that's a memorable moment, you know, when somebody like John Lennon dies, when two music, big music people are there and you, you see the reaction they yeah. have and how devastating. Right. Yeah. I'll never forget that. That was really cool. And then, well, of course you met John. I already told that one. Uh, uh and then, uh, Leon gave me a 1965 four-door Chevelle that he had that was sitting around had power windows and power seats and air conditioning 65 man but it was a four-door you know and it was really cool <clears throat> and I just I got it and 
<clears throat> did some work on the engine. I had to do some stuff on the engine. I had, I had to pull the pull the oil pan, <clears throat> and that's a little difficult on a 283. You got to mess around with the timing chain cover, and you got to kind of jiggle jag jiggle jiggle it in there so you don't. But anyways, enough said about that. Where was I going? Uh, 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 oh, okay. We're riding around in this thing, and. It was the night that Gary's mother died, or she was. Oh I yeah. I think she had just died, and and Gary just wanted to get out and go for a ride, you know. And me and him were in that old Chevelle, and we were just riding around. And he was really hurt, you know. And he yeah, that sucks. And yeah. Talking, you know, and I think I even seen tears in his eyes, you know. And he was really upset, you know. And he was telling me about stuff he, from what his mom did when he was young and <clears throat> you know I wish I could remember that but it's like when me and Ronnie were fishing you know it's just you know it's the feelings anybody would feel when their mother died I mean just you can put yourself in that place you'd be saying the same thing but yeah it was uh, that was pretty touching and and rememberable I mean it's a bad thing to remember but you know see you know, to see somebody like that go through, you know, that are so as fortunate as they are, you, they, you know, their life is devastating for them too. They're not, you know, it's, he's just like me and you. He just, you know, hit a niche that was, was great. And everybody, you know, everybody has, every God made everybody different and everybody has a little niche that they really need to focus on instead of everybody trying to act the same as this guy over here and the same guy that's over here you know you need to kind of follow your follow your uh, heart sometimes and you know and do do things that uh, other people find weird <laughs> you know, that's where how we get to <clears throat> where we are now people thinking outside the box just like you know Gary and Ronnie, you know, it's, you know, how are a couple of the poor kids from Jacksonville ever going to be successful? What's the odds of that? But you got to, they gave it everything they got. And man, and if they'd have failed, <laughs> they'd have been screwed. I think. No, I don't mean it, Gary. Sorry about that. You'd have been a baseball player. Sure you would have. <laughs> no, yeah. I can't even laugh, you know. <laughs> he says, I knew I was going to make it. You knew that. He did. He was, He he knew he was going to make it. They all knew they were going to make it, you know. I don't know, somehow. You know, I talk weird about when we all have. And I told Gary about this. I said, how in the hell did you and Ronnie and Alan and Billy and Leon and Ricky and 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 um, uh, Artemis and Bob and Larry Junstrom and you know all of you uh, are different. How can you put a, a dozen people together that are different and come out with a couple of different bands? You know, I mean. You know, Larry Steele, you know, thought he was going to be the bass player. I mean, God, and then all of you, the, the perfect match just fell together. Oh, and where the hell did Billy come from? I wanted to ask if Billy, if, whose friend was Billy, and why didn't they know that Billy was such a great piano player? I... I, I, I how can you be somebody's friend and not know that that's all the hell you do? And then somebody said, well, they thought all he could do was play classical piano. And then Ronnie heard him and they said, uh, you're in the band. What are you doing being a roadie? You're in the band. So Gary, tell us what the hell. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll be your, I'll be your soundboard, you know, so you, you don't have to get in here and, 
and uh, and, and and do this because it c becomes quite cumbersome. It starts out small and it ends up that's the uh, all the hell you do all day like I do. But you know I'm enjoying it. You know I'm having fun doing this. I was kind of uncomfortable. I wouldn't be able to do it. You know and this. This is our 11th one, you know, and we're still practicing here, man. We got another one to do, and that's 12, and then and we're and, experts, and, and then and then we're experts from there on. So we got this one, a little bit of this one to go. How much more of this one? Got? Boy, we've been a long time on this one, but that's okay. This one's special. This is about Gary, you know. We, you know, and, and uh, God, how often do you have a show where you know? Gary Rossington is watching this, you know, I mean, he's probably God. afraid you're going to say something about him. <laughs> no, he ain't afraid. I ain't. There ain't nothing to say about him, man. Don't you start that crap too. <laughs> man, he's cool, man. He, yeah. He's Prince Charming. Well, they call well, him know, Prince Charming. You know stuff about he can't me. Take I, I a think. word when he's full of lewds. But he'll be all right come tomorrow. But tomorrow might not for, be here for you. Uh -huh. Hell yeah. Ooh, that smell. Oh, yeah. And me and Gary talked about that, too. He said, you know, you talk. I hear you talk about people getting healthy, you know, good for you. you know? Yeah, he, he looks like he's doing better. You need, to, you, need you know, I, I'm trying to get healthy and... and you know, I listen to you and stuff you're trying to preach to people about quitting all that crap, you know, testify, you know, I wish I wouldn't have done all that like I did, but it's fun at the time. I, I said, well, it was fun at the time. What did he go, yeah, it was, wasn't it? But it's hell now, you know, would you change it? I don't know. That's a tough one, ain't it? <laughs> and uh, I know, it's fun, but you know, uh, yeah, man. People need to start thinking about their health, you know, and just, you know, if you do it, just do less, you know, or whatever. But you know, that's Gary, man. He's uh, well. Man, hey, Craig, Gary, to, Gary's definitely not. I, I re hey, I regret taking it to the limit, man. That's what I'm trying to tell you, all you people, man. You know, it's just like. You know, it was fun, but, uh, you know, you're feeling it. Luckily, luckily, man, I got good genes. I'm 71, and I'm still rocking pretty good. You know, I'm, I'm brain dead, but, you know, I had that airplane crash, you know, and I got knocked in the head. It's not my fault. What are you going to do, making fun of somebody because they was in a plane crash and I got brain damage? God, you're sick, you know. <laughs> you, you have no compassion. <laughs> I have an audience today. Hey, hey, welcome Dave Chabelle over here. He showed up. I was trying to put this damn green screen together myself, but I couldn't figure out. He showed up the last minute, and I said, what the hell, we'll just go without it. But So I had him be my display man over here, but, you know, and write, might write my notes. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, what, what are we going to do now, man? I... Well, I don't hey, uh, think any more Gary stories right now. Sorry, Gary, but yeah, uh, well, God, what else could I tell? Well, you? Hey, hey. Gary was always no, no, no. I think I've already told you. Know Gary yeah. was really good to me, man. He gave me, he gave me that red jeep. He gave me, he gave me. Uh, he when Alan passed away and. and Gary, you know, wanted that stuff. He didn't want to negotiate the deals with Larkin, really, you know. So I got him uh, the uh, the Mer I got Ronnie's Mercedes, the old one, and and then uh, oh, here's a good. I got this out of a. Uh, and then he and then he gave me the the he got the hot rod, you know, because you know he he saw that I kind of had a fancy for the hot rod so he bought it and gave it to me you know and then i fixed it up <clears throat> but alan gave him and i saw where he actually did a commercial in that car you know the 39 buick you know where it's like a gangster mobile that that guy how much time we got uh we're uh, right around 30 minutes 
Okay, I'll make this quick. The, the gangster mobile, man, that was Alan's car. And, you know, I drove Alan around, and me and Alan took a trip down to Miami in that car. And I don't know, he kind of he trusted the gas gauge, and I was kind of going, we need gas. I'll pull over the next one. Yeah, it works fine. You know, he was all, we had, we had a bottle of whiskey in the car. We had lines on the dashboard we had, you know just we were partying man we were smoking and everything and we run out of gas you know and I'm, I'm driving alan down to the the criteria in miami in that old car you know and we run out of gas and the damn police pull up oh yeah you know we got open containers we got powder we got you know and they and they and they flipped out about the car, you know. So right away, we're trying to tell them who we were. <laughs> you know? Hey, where's that skitter? Oh man! But the the police chief was a car fanatic, so they called the chief. And before you know it, there's a dozen cops around oh, the yeah. 39 <laughs> Buick. We got a whiskey bottle open. We got. <laughs> traces of damn white powder all over the place that smelled <laughs> like damn skunk and they they had to see it they just blew it off you know some cool cops out there still you know but they were car free they went brought us gas <laughs> and sent us on our way told us be careful that was so cool man yeah, yeah but yeah uh, but uh, alan gave that car to gary because Gary saved Alan's life. <laughs> Alan was smoking some of, you know, I can, you know, everybody knows Alan was crazy. Alan was smoking some of that free base and smoked too much of it. And luckily, from Gary and Alan and me, I, I, I never got certified, but we all dove. We went, we all got our, they got their license. And I just got the equipment, <laughs> you know, but I went diving with them, but they went, they went diving and with some guy died inside of a cave and they kind of didn't go anymore. But yeah, yeah. we went a few times, but from, from Gary and Alan taking those CPR tests, he, uh, Gary saved Alan's life. His heart stopped and, and he saved Gary, Alan's life and. So Alan gave Gary that 39 Buick, you know, for saving his life. You know, not, not, nobody knows that story. So except Gary, I'm sorry, Gary, if you wanted to keep that one a secret, but I don't think you care about that one. That's a pretty cool story, man. So Gary, yeah, Gary saved Alan's life, you know, but he took his own not after long after that. So, you know, God took him, but. Only the good die young, you know, it's, you know, Gary, I guess maybe Ronnie learned everything he had to learn in the third dimension and moved on to the next universe or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and then what do we got else? How long are we going to go out? Hey, go well, out Craig, to... uh, now that we're on the Gary Rossington subject, um, a lot of people don't realize this, and I'm friends with Joe Crimp, and Gary, if you're listening here, uh, Joe Crimp was telling me all about the story. He was in the car with you when you hit the oak tree. And uh, a lot of people don't know <laughs> Joe Crimp. He, he told me the whole story behind that. Maybe one day we can get Gary to talk about that. that well, it's oak. odd that you mentioned that because you we, I, I was telling the, 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 the tale about Gene Odom sa saying that that was the tree and, and and we got as far as me saying that somebody took a piece and chipped it off and gave it to me and then i took off in, in a whole nother direction <laughs> well what happened was and this is great because this shows the how popular leonard skinner are this is classic gary you'll love this one you'll love this one gene was going around telling everybody that that you hit this one particular tree and i when i when i come down there oh god yes yeah, the good <laughs> when i go <laughs> you'll love this gary <laughs> 
when I come down there to go on that 30th thing, Gene had everybody out there on the road looking at this tree you hit, and, and they, and they, or he said you hit, <laughs> and he did, somebody took a, a knife and cut off his big tree piece of bark about that long, I don't know, and it, I said, I don't know what that is, you know? then I thought about it, you know, I said, you know, it's better to have than to have not, you know, <laughs> you never know, so I said, yeah, if it's free, it's for me, you know, give me that, you know, <laughs> so, so I took it, and by the time I got it home, it had busted in three pieces says you know so I said oh shit so I put it on eBay you know I said here here's a piece of the oak tree Gary hit and I got a hundred and fifty dollars for a little little bitty piece of a damn oak tree about the inch and a half long and about three quarters of an inch wide or something. Got 150 bucks. Wrote him a document of authenticity. He said, yeah, this is the this is the oak tree that Gary hit, you know, here's a piece of it, you know. And so I sold three pieces of that damn thing, and I got that piece of wood like that. I got four hundred fifty dollars out of three pieces of damn tree bark. I I had to go in the Guinness Book of World Records. Leonard Skinner sold the biggest piece of, I got the most out of ever a piece of tree. Well, but the funny part is, I told somehow I was talking to Joe Cripp, and Joe said. That's not the tree Gary hit. I was with him. It was all the way on the other side of the town, you know. So there's three people out there bought this piece of tree bark that I authenticated. And it's not real. So so there you go. You know, somebody accused me of selling something on eBay that wasn't real. There well, you go. I thought I sold three pieces. Well, but... Craig, hold on, Craig. <laughs> Hold on, because I I told that story to Gene and Gene. No, but let me let me let me to finish though. And then and then Gene goes out and, and, and cuts down a piece of a tree that falls down. And can't even somehow Griff ends up with a piece of this tree that was hit by lightning, and it and it was fat wood. and it, it, it and it's uh, it's basically turpentine. It's you know when a, a, a pine tree dies the the turpentine the sap settles in the joints and it becomes petrified like it's just solid turp serpentine they call it fat wood and and griff cut that fat wood into itty bitty pieces about like a number two pencil about that long and he sent me a dozen pieces of it and i sold each one of them pieces for 50 bucks so i got i got 600 dollars for a little bag of damn fat wood but what was funny was Griff told me that it lights real good, you know, because it's turpentine and it lights real easy. And he said, when I lit it, you could hear Freebird coming from the smoke. Yeah. So I wrote documents of authenticity for this damn fat one. And I said, Griff said, when you light it, you can hear Freebird come in from the smoke. And That's I a true sold, story. I sold 12 of those for... So for 50 bucks a piece. So, you know, that just goes to show you. How well, hey, Craig, is. that tree, that tree. But I, you know what? I put right the damn things up for night. Hell, hold on a minute. There's some well, rocket scientist. I'm still talking here. I'm talking here. <laughs> I, I put them up for night. Gary, Gary, Gary. I ain't never sold anything on eBay that I had put in and put it up for 99 cents. I'm not the one that put stuff up there for a thousand dollars, you know. No, everything I put up stuff up there that's what for a couple thousand dollars a T-shirt, Gary. I put it up for ninety-nine cents, and I am not the one that said it's worth that much. They, they damn, they're they're the ones that do it, you know. And they're and they're and they do. I mean. Uh, I've sold a lot of stuff on there, 99 cents, and and they take it up to the moon, you know, Gary, because that's because you're so famous and so damn, that's why they call you Prince Charming, damn, you're so cool, you you got to wear a coat, in the, do you still wear a coat in the summertime, I bet you do, damn, you're so cool. <laughs> what hey, else Greg, are you going to talk Greg, about? Greg, I'm going to cover your ass right now, because that that fat wood grew right by the hell house. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You tell the story. Yeah. 
it soaked up all that music and that's why when you light it you can hear all that music and then at that oak tree that that gene said gary hit i told that story and he said gary hit every damn oak tree in jacksonville so you can take a piece of bark off of any oak tree in jacksonville because gary's hit it so they're all valuable <laughs> Well, that's his opinion. I got my opinion. You got your opinion. Dave over here, he's got opinion. <laughs> Leon and Wicker, they both got an opinion. Everybody's got an opinion. Opinions. opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one. Next. <laughs> I believe that probably covers it. We're in probably about 40 minutes on this podcast, but it was a it was a special right. tribute to Gary Rossington. So All righty. Uh, here we have 11 we got 11 under our belt, you know, and it's yeah. going to get out late because uh, I just got a late start. I don't know, but this was 11. Yeah, and I think we could just about call this a wrap. What do you say, audience? Hey, yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. That's number 11 of the Stone Roadie Show and with, with, with the Stone, Craig Reed, the Stone Roadie, and Griff, the rocket scientist, Griff Martin, Griff Martin, the rocket scientist, and that's a wrap, Griff Martin, cut. See you next time.